Michael Norman needs to run the 400 meters this year. Now, we just saw him run the 200 meters at Mount Sac. Fred Curley got the win there in 19.80 seconds, while Norman was second just by a hair in 19.83 seconds. And of course, he's one of the best all around sprinters in the history of the sport. 9.86 personal best in the 100, 19.70 in the 200, and of course, his 43.45 in that 400 meters. But these sprint performances that he's put down have brought a couple people to say that he should potentially drop down to contest the 100 or the 200 meters or maybe even both at the world championships this year as opposed to the 400 meters but personally i don't think that this is the right time for him to drop down of course a lot of people are saying he struggled in the 400 right 2019 he had some injuries he lost a curly at usa's got to Doha, couldn't make it out of the semifinals because of his injuries. 2021 came around with Tokyo. Of course, he won the Olympic trials, but he finished fifth in the Tokyo final, not really living up to the potential and some of the expectations that people had. But I think that the 400 meters is still going to be his bread and butter and probably the best path to earn a global medal. Remember, Michael Norman does not have any global individual medals yet. He has a relay medal from Tokyo, doesn't have an individual medal yet. I think the 400 meters specifically this year is going to be his best path to that. Why? Well, as you drop down in the distances again this year, it really gets a lot more challenging and the fields get very, very stacked. So let's dive into some of those reasons and look at the landscapes of the 100, 200 and 400 meters this year. First off, the 100 meters. Now, Norman has a personal best of 9.86 seconds. He ran that in 2020. He also, after the Tokyo Olympic Games, where he got fifth in the 400 meters, decided to go on the circuit and run a couple hundred meters. He ran 9.90 seconds wind aided. He also ran 9.98 and 9.97. So he got pretty consistent in the 100 meters running sub tens, but I don't think that's gonna be enough when we're looking at the rest of the 100 meter guys. First off, Christian Coleman, we're actually gonna to get to him in a second because he has the wild card to Eugene this year. Now, just looking at US trials, US championships this year, he's gonna to have to go up against Trayvon Bermel, 9.76 seconds in the 100 meters last year. Of course, he didn't make the Olympic final and people had some expectations, but before and after the Olympics, he was extremely consistent and of course was the world leader. So he's a force to be reckoned with. Fred Curley just beat Norman in the 200, but personal best of 9.84 seconds in that 100. He also, of course, is the Olympic silver medalist and he's a Diamond League champion. Fred Curley dropped down from the 400 and he really became the guy to beat. So can't take away from him and he's already run 9.9 .9 seconds this year, really early in April. So he's probably one of the guys to really look out for this year. Ronnie Baker got second at the US trials, has a personal best of 9.83 seconds at the Tokyo semifinals and they got fifth in the Tokyo final. Of course, people probably expected him to do better, but he got fifth in the Olympic final. He is still a force to be reckoned with. He is a little inconsistent, but I think his fast times, his ability to start really fast, definitely going to be one to look out for. Have to mention Marvin Bracey. He has a personal best of 9.85 seconds, which he ran on two occasions last year. He unfortunately got injured at the trials last year in the 100, but came back, ran a couple good times in the outdoor season, got the bronze medal indoors in the 60 meters, only behind Coleman and Marcel Jacobs. So Bracey is definitely one to look out for as well. And that's just a couple guys, right? I didn't even mention guys like Kenny Benarek, Noah Lyles, Makai Williams. Um, there's tons and tons of guys who are definitely gonna be in the mix that Norman is really gonna have to go up against. Then, after we get to trials, let's say Norman actually makes the 100 meter team, gets into that top three, then we have to deal with the rest of the world. Like I noted, Christian Coleman, he has the wild card to the world championships, won in 2019, personal best of 9.76 seconds. He already got silver at the world indoor championships, showing that he's running on all cylinders at this moment and is only going to get better. Of course, the Olympic champion, Marcel Jacobs, he is also the, a world indoor champion at 60 meters, running on all cylinders, definitely one to look out for there. Also other guys, Andre de Grasse, we gotta think about Akani Simbine. There's a ton of guys internationally who Norman is going to have to go up against and really makes this field extremely deep when we look at that 100 meters. Now let's jump over to the 200 meters where probably Norman has a lot better chance than the 100 in my opinion at least. 200, I think it's still just a stack though. Let's look at first, of course, Noah Lyles. So similar to Coleman in the 100, Lyles has that 200 meter wild card. He doesn't have to contest trials, so we'll jump to him in a moment. 
Next after that, of course, like I mentioned, Fred Curley, he just beat Norman in the 200 meters here. He has a personal best of 19.76 seconds. And again, probably the hottest all around sprinter at the moment right now. So definitely he's gonna be a challenger. Kenny Benaric, last year, Benaric ran sub 20 seconds on 13 occasions. He never finished lower than second place in any of his races. Olympic silver medal, he also got the Diamond League Championship win. So he is, in my opinion, probably the best 200 meter runner that the United States has. Arian Knighton, 19.84 personal best, running it at the trials last year, got fourth place at the Tokyo Olympics. His year already has been pretty significant despite not running super fast times. Of course, he didn't run the 200 yet, but he beat Noah Lyles on two occasions already this year in the 100 meters, and he was on that two minutes, 57 second four by four that Adidas ran down in Florida. He split 45 seconds. I think once we see Knighton open up in the 200, he is really gonna be on pace to improve his personal best and dip into those 197s. And that's going to be a really tough person to crack when we're talking about the top three in the 200. Finally, I have to mention Terrence Laird. Of course, he made it to the US Olympic trials final in the 200 last year. Didn't do as well as probably people expected, but he still has bests of 19.81 and 19.82 seconds. This is his first year as a professional athlete. So look out for him to also challenge when we come to that 200 meters. So just like the 100 meters, the 200 is extremely stacked. But let's say Norman, again, he makes that 200 meter team. What's he gonna be contending with when we get to the world? Noah Lyles, wild card to the world championships, best of 19.50 seconds, and he is pretty consistent when we talk about 19.5, 19.6. 19 19.50 personal bets, ran 19.52 last year. He's run 19.65 on multiple occasions. So Noah Lyles is probably maybe not the favorite, not sure where he's at right now, but he is the top 200 meter runner when we talk about some guys to contend with. And we also can't forget about Andre de Grasse, Olympic champion, ran 19.62 to win that Olympic gold. And he is a definition of Mr. Consistent. When it's time to medal, he is right there to medal. Him getting that gold medal last year showed that he is ready to make some big steps up. So a lot of guys in the 200 meters, I didn't even mention guys like Divine Oduduru, um, Jareem Richards from Trinidad and Tobago, even Steven Gardner mentioned that he might be going for a 200 meter attempt at Worlds now. So Norman's gonna have a lot of people to contend with. So we'll see what happens in that 200. So why is the 400 meters the best option? Well, look at the 400 meter field right now. Who's the best American right now? Let's exclude Norman, Michael Cherry. Michael Cherry, fourth place at the Olympic Games, has a real strong personal best just on the cusp of breaking that 44 second barrier. But guess what? He won the Diamond League last year, so he has a wild card to the World Championships. He doesn't have to worry about trials. That opens up the field for a plethora of athletes who are all gonna be vying for those top three spots. But there isn't that deep kind of field that we saw in 100 and 200 meters. After Cherry and Norman, probably have Randolph Ross from North Carolina a &T. Of course, he ran 43.8 last year, and he made the Olympic team last year. But when he got to Tokyo, unfortunately, he didn't do well either on the individual or in the relay. So he's a little unproven. We got to see what he does when it comes to trials after the NCAA season. After that, we're looking at a plethora of guys. Bryce Deadman, Noah Williams, Vernon Norwood, Trevor Stewart, right? There's tons of guys who are really on the cusp there, but no one who's really a standout like we have in the 100 and 200 meters that's really, really gonna be able to challenge either Cherry or Norman. So really open field. I think this gives Norman the best opportunity to split into the top three and make a world championship team and potentially challenge for a medal. Now, when we get to those world championships, the field also is pretty tough, but I think there's an opening here. Steven Gardner, probably gonna be the toughest competition. Of course, the Olympic champion, the reigning world champion. He's of course gonna be the top guy, but he noted that he might be going for the 200. Not sure if he's gonna double, not sure what he's gonna do, but he'll be there. Karani James, one of the greatest 400 meter runners ever. He got the bronze medal last year. He's gonna be in contention. Anthony Zambrano, silver medalist from Tokyo, he'll be there. After that, of course, you have Cherry as well. There's not that many guys internationally who are really at that top tier. So I think the 400 meters really presents the best opening for Norman to again, get that individual global medal and really cement himself so then he could try out a couple other things after that. But let's be very, very, very clear. Michael Norman is one of the greatest sprinters that we have ever seen. Like I said, 
personal best of 9.86, 19.70, and 43.45 seconds. That's not something you just wake up and run, right? Those are some of the best times in the history of each of those events. I honestly think if he was to go for it, he can make any of the sprint teams that he wanted, just like Fred Curley is, you know, showing everyone that he can do right now. But if we're talking about getting that initial global medal, I think Norman should probably stick to the 400 meters right now and then attack some of the other sprints later. So let me know what you think. Do you think Norman should stick to the 400 or should he drop down and try out the 100, the 200, maybe the double, or maybe even the 4-2 double? Go in the comments below, let me know what you think. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and be back again next time. Thanks.